Please welcome Jeannie White Gender. It's so nice to see you. For so many of us, Jeannie, remember Ryan's story as if it were yesterday. It's been 25 years since Ryan died, and, and you must think about him still almost every day. Uh, every day. Every day, and I don't think any mother who has lost a child doesn't have that pain every day. Yeah, everybody told me to get easier. It doesn't get any easier. But you learn, learn to live with it, really, because you have to, not because you want to. And you have done so many extraordinary things honoring his memory, as did Ryan himself during his 18 years on this earth. And, and I hope that gives you some degree of comfort. I know it still must be very difficult. And when you, when you found out that he had AIDS, that you heard that, that word, what was your reaction? How? <laughs> why, why did my son get this disease? And they said, well, we think this might be the tip of the iceberg. We think that uh, all hemophiliacs might have been infected. And I was like, how could this happen? I mean, if it's such a new, new disease, why couldn't you even be wrong? So I think I, I, prayers, I kept thinking that just somehow, some way, have it be something else. That there must be some mistake. Yeah, there must be some mistake. And in the years following his diagnosis, as we saw, and I remember it so vividly, mm -hmm. your family faced so much hatred, ignorance, and fear. And I'm just wondering, what, it, what was it like as, as a mom and as just a, a member of your community to have to deal with all of that? How did you get through it, Jeannie? I think faith and I think setting priorities. Everybody thought the number one priority was fighting to get Ryan in school. That was not my number one priority. My number one priority was keeping Ryan alive as long as I could. If anything, any way I could do it, I wanted to do it. Number two was trying to keep my daughter included in our in our family, which Ryan got so much attention. Right, number Andrea was born two years after Ryan. Yes, she's two years younger. Number, uh, trying to keep Andrea involved in our family. Number three was trying to keep my job at General Motors, which we had to have. I had to have that job. And number three or four, five, six, maybe was the fight to go to school, but that's what made Ryan really famous. And, and when he became really essentially a public figure, you must have been heartened by the support he received from so many different people. I remember Michael Jackson, Elton John, and other people coming and supporting Ryan and supporting your family. What did that mean to you? I, you know, I think it, we felt like we weren't alone. That, and Ryan always said, you know, for the first time, Mom, I feel like we're not fighting this disease alone, that we got other people fighting it with us. And I think for the first time, for the first time, we really, when he was first diagnosed, I mean, we saw such negativity. And to see so much positive with celebrities lending their face and voice to the AIDS epidemic, I think it made a, a big difference. He died on April 8th, 1990, nearly five and a half years after his diagnosis. And what were those final weeks and days like for you? Well, you know, he was only supposed to live three to six months. And, you know, you have that planted in you that he's supposed to not live very long, but you don't want to ever go there. And so you can't prepare yourself. It was just like, this is not right. This is, this is a dream. I mean, nobody probably had more people praying over them than Ryan White did. And I, I just could not believe he was really, really gone. It was just, you know, it was just, I don't even remember. I don't remember getting home that day. I don't, there's so many things I don't remember those last few days at the hospital because I just, I don't know, I, I just could not I could hardly go there, even though I kind of knew, but I didn't want to go there. And I'm sure what you do remember, I hope, was when Ryan was a vibrant young man and committing himself to helping other people who had faced a similar diagnosis. And Dr. Lisa Fitzpatrick is an infectious disease specialist with the US United Medical Center in Washington, D.C. And Dr. Fitzpatrick, you know, Ryan wasn't the only hemophiliac at the time who had been diagnosed with AIDS. That's true. About 12,000 people contracted HIV through blood products. But the good news is since 2000, 2008 was the last time there's a known reported case of HIV transmission through the blood supply. And prior to that, we hadn't seen a case since 2002. So we've come a long way. The blood supply became safe in 1985. And now, fewer than 100 people since Ryan's death 
have contracted HIV through the blood supply. Which is great news. And if Ryan were to have been diagnosed today, how would his prognosis be different in terms of the kinds of advancements that have been made? Night and day, because of the scientific advancements in HIV, Ryan would still be with us today. And we owe Ryan and you, you Ms. White, a debt of gratitude because millions of our patients, because of the Ryan White Care Act, are able to get treatment that they need for HIV and live a long life. And, and well, let's see. <laughs> so 25 years later, you still are, are involved. We saw you with President Obama and President mm -hmm. Clinton, and you're still out there fighting. Why? I, you know, I think Ryan's legacy, there were so many people that contributed so much to this disease. Not just Ryan, yes, his name was on the bill, but so many people that are no longer here. And so many of my friends just said, you know, please do this for us. So not only I think do I continue the fight for Ryan, I continue for all the people that I have lost that, and loved. Well, thank you for all that you've done. Thank Jeannie you. White Gender, it's so nice to see you again. Thank you. And we appreciate your being here Thanks, today. Katie.